Welcome to the second episode in a Legendarium series called Little Ice Age Great Famine. In part two, we will talk about how a series of torrential rainstorms caused the dispossession of the poor and a disastrous harvest that would leave a continent foodless. In April 1315, at a time when Europe suffered a series of poor harvests that left many of its 75 million inhabitants hungry, the gray skies over Europe turned black. Rain came down in a way that no one had ever seen before. It was hard and pelting. Those caught outside found themselves with stung skin, painful eyes, and reddened faces. Far more worryingly, the rain ripped apart the soft ground with the force of a plow. In parts of southern Yorkshire, sheets of torrential rain washed away the topsoil and left the bedrock behind. In other areas, fields turned into rivers and lakes. Nottingham received so much rain that it formed inland seas within the lowlands. Flanders, the most urbanized part of Europe, likely saw the worst of the downpours. Day after day, thunder blasted above Antwerp. Floodwaters rose up in the city streets. Rows of soot-stained rectangular houses began to lean to one side as the waters rose. People inside could not even light a fire as their ceilings leaked. Bread grew green with mold. People caught outside could be drowned by the floodwaters, and every time the rainwater receded, bloated corpses would be found lying on the street. Not surprisingly, poorer peasants suffered the most from this devastation. In three English counties alone, 16,000 acres of plowland simply vanished. Some farmland would take years to recover, some would never recover. As they found themselves forced to leave their homes, the poor huddled under trees and bowers, listening to the rain pounding on the leaves and churning up mud. Monks wrote of peasants reduced to grazing in the grass like cattle, begging alongside roads, and searching behind alehouses and taverns for moldy scraps of bread. Some of the poor were reduced to selling all of their clothes and shoes. Cities found themselves filling up with poor peasants reduced to destitution by the floods. Yet the trouble had not yet begun. It would have surprised few that the harvest of 1315 proved to be the worst in living memory. The summer torrents stunted and waterlogged the wheat and rye, which served as the staff of life for most Europeans. While oats, barley, and spelt had been harvested, there would not be enough to feed everyone, and surviving wheat tended to be moist and unripe. Not surprisingly, the cost of bread began to skyrocket. In the Louvain region of France, the price of wheat rose 320% in seven months. In England, the price of wheat rose six times over from its 1313 price. In the English countryside, the average laborer earned about 30 shillings a year. Now a year's worth of barley cost 60 shillings. The prices for other necessities like beans, oats, malt, peas, and salt rose as well. The high price of salt was especially devastating as it was the only way at the time to cure and preserve meat. Most salt was obtained through evaporating seawater, but the wet weather made that process almost impossible. Even what could be harvested could rarely be moved because of washed out bridges and roads. In the spring of 1315, Edward II decreed that the price of basic foodstuffs be limited, but this did nothing to end the crisis. Traders simply refused to sell their goods at these low prices, and the famine grew worse. To learn more about the disastrous reign of King Edward II, follow the link in the description. Things grew worse during the early winter months of 1316. As the price of food rose and rose, people were reduced to eating bird dung, family pets, mildewed wheat, and finally, each other. 
In Ireland, the starving were reduced to digging up cemeteries, ripping flesh from bone, and cooking it in pots. In England, people deliberately got themselves arrested so they would be fed in jail. Yet as the price of food rose and rose, the warden stopped feeding their prisoners, and as the felons grew desperate, they too began to eat each other. In Germany, monks reported that some parents grew so hungry they began to eat their own children. In other instances, children ate their own parents. Indeed, the fairy tale of Hansel and Gretel may have originated at this time. While the story of Hansel and Gretel may be a fiction, many children like Hansel and Gretel were abandoned by their parents because they simply did not have enough food for them. In one instance, the terrible famine of 1315 affected the course of wars and kingdoms. King Robert the Bruce, only the year before, had won the Battle of Bannockburn, his greatest victory yet over the ongoing English occupation. Yet King Robert now found himself ruling over a foodless kingdom. In a desperate attempt to find sustenance, his Scots raided the Tyne Valley and other parts of northern England, burning whatever they couldn't carry and returning with herds of emaciated cattle. Sir James Douglas's raids grew so fearsome that northern English mothers sang their children to sleep with the lullaby, Hush ye, hush ye, do not fret ye, the Black Douglas shall not get ye. The uh, widespread devastation of northern England, first by famine and then by Scottish plunderers, caused vast swathes of countryside to simply be abandoned. Some of these regions would not recover for a generation. That wraps things up for this installment of The Legendarium. I hope you found it informative. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.